morning, everyone. Good morning. Or you might be afternoon. Who it knows? Might, it might be, yeah, yeah, it might be evening. We could be reaching, you know, I don't know what, you know, country. <laughs> <laughs> hi. <laughs> yeah, hi. Um, today we are talking, we're going to be discussing language versus physicality. Um, and we thought about this in the week and it's quite a, it's been a powerful one for me. And I'm just going to explain my understanding of it first, um, and then Leanne will do the same. But see, this one, language versus physicality. When I first understood this, because you know you hear uh, thoughts become things and the power of thought and be positive because of this. It was, yeah, yeah, I'm hearing this. I'm not feeling it yet. But I remember when I had one of those light bulb moments and I was like, oh. I get it because I was, you know, I think I had a really challenging week, which we know is okay, <laughs> but the words I was using were so um, abusive to myself. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I was ill all week. So I've become really unwell. Um, and yeah, the power of thought is, you know, I've done exercises before. If you was to, you know, hold your arm up, and you know repeat um words to yourself like i'm useless i'm unworthy i am um you name it you know the words we use i hate myself i'm ugly i am fat i'm you know too skinny or um i've got a big nose you name it um if you were to you know get someone to try this exercise with you and push down your arm would be weak it doesn't matter how strong you try and put it your arm becomes weak when you do the opposite and you say, do you know what, I'm, um, you don't even have to lie because if you say I'm beautiful, you don't feel it. You can say, you know, actually, I'm a kind person. And you, mm. you, there's evidence of that. It doesn't matter, you know, there's evidence you've been kind somewhere. Um, and you, um, I'm working towards um, being myself. You name it. Um, your arm is so strong. I've done this exercise many a times. Mm -hmm. The power of thought, it's, um, it changes everything. We wake up and we're feeling, um, well, I've had this, I've woke up in the morning, opened my eyes and I thought, overwhelmed. Oh my God, I've got to do this, I've got to do that, I've got to do this, I've got to do that. And then I've got to work tonight. Um, and then the kids need entertaining. Uh, I'm a bad mum. You name it, it just rolls on and rolls on. <laughs> and you get out of bed and, you know, you stub your toe. <laughs> <laughs> fall down the stairs and I said that that's a bit of exaggeration but everything and you're just on it and this goes on all day but when you yeah. start to really see this you can do all those things in the morning but then you snap out a bit quicker this is what I found I snapped yeah. out a bit quicker yeah. well hang on a minute just breathe <laughs> breathe because you can't get from that place when you're in a role of this train of thoughts to a grounded place where you can start thinking rationally. So just breathe, slow down, and then I find writing it down in a diary, releasing this, and then I find um, my wisdom come through, the truth and the words, and it's not even, you don't even have to fake it to make it, it's already there. <laughs> <laughs> it's already there, and you know, this that inner voice comes through and says, actually, what do you do? You know. You say you're a bad mum, that was a big one for me. You say you're a bad mum, but what have you done rather than what you haven't done? And the list is quite, you showed up. You show up. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you, you, you talk to them, you show up, you, you comfort them, you go to their sports days. Um, and if, if you can't go to their sports days, you will sit there and read them a book. You show up. So there's loads more. For, and when, and the energy I started to feel, I was like, oh, wow. The energy I started to feel after this was um, just uplifted. And then an hour later, when you start playing with this, you're back, you're back here again. Mm -hmm. And when you, you know, when you really get in touch with this power of thought and the language we use to ourselves, um, it's actually quite um, amusing in, in the end. I find it quite funny in the end. You know, it's interesting. But first of all, it's not. I'm not going to take away. First of all, it's challenging, it's painful, it's um, mm. 
you want to scream, you can't see a way out because when you're up there, those thoughts, those fear-based thoughts, more fear-based thoughts just right, like come Ooh. in so thick and fast. So how I got out of it is um, breathing. But you've got to feel it first. Mm-hmm. What I find, you've got to feel it first before you can connect with it. Because language is one thing. Once you feel it, that's when you connect them both, that's a yeah. different level. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What about you, Leanne? What's your understanding? Well, <laughs> well, <laughs> well, um, but, um, suffering from, oh, even the word suffering, um, suffering from, um, I've had difficulties with my health throughout my life. Um, um, that's why I, well, I believe now I'm quite unrecognisable, even from five years, ten years ago, after I started what I would uh, put in having a healthier mind, having more awareness, more um, worth. When I started seeing my worth and wasn't listening to the negative chatter of, I didn't even know I was doing it because this is the back to the innocence again, isn't it? So like, you know, um, you know, finding out that I actually, you know, the way I was treating myself was, oh, I've, I've got loads of empathy for myself now. But, you know, mm. so my thing was being worthless. So how do you think I treated myself? Pretty damn worthless. <laughs> yeah. So, and I didn't realise, and it's when I started looking at um, language, I really noticed what we say is what we attract. So, for instance, um, our bodies are a sp- like a sponge of our feelings. So if we're having a lot of um, low feelings, low vibrations, our body responds to that. Um, so if we have a lot of like um, uplifting thoughts and stuff like that, or use the word positive thoughts, our mood is, is light, lighter, happier, and more, because obviously um, it's an inside job. Everything is an inside job. But for me, so when people are like, will say, especially like in these times, if you know, um, with COVID-19, the language that's used is like, things are really hard. Everyone's really struggling. You know, it's unprecedented times. Um, you know, people are isolated. I mean, and if people are listening to this day in, day out, they're telling themselves this day in, day out, how do you think they're going to feel? You know, so it really is looking about what we, what we have, like you said. So I'm one of these people that's totally shielding. So this is, Monday is my 13th week of not going, I've had one walk and because what I was experiencing on the walk, so... And I'm like, I'm so grateful. So I now look at stuff. And so I'm so grateful for my garden. I'm so grateful for what I have. I have food in the cupboard. I have light, electric. I have water. I have safety. You know, I have a lot more peace of mind. But I'm digressing a little bit. I'm going off a little bit. So what I noticed is, so my, my health um, is so much better. So when I started doing a little bit of research in all this stuff, there's... Um, there was a documentary I watched and I can't remember what it's called. Um, but anyway, they did a natural scientific study of someone with a low level opinion of themselves. And they did like um, a, a biopsy of their cells. Um, so basically the nucleus, the brain of the cell was kind of like an, a, like a, an eight shape. So it kind of pinched in the middle and the, the general over, you know, it was like a little bit floopsy. I can't, I can't <laughs> explain what the shape looked like. Floopsy. I mean, come on. Any language might say floopsy. Anyway, so then, so they based, and then they showed um, a cell of somebody that had done work on themselves, generally um, loving the life they had. Not that it was anything to do with material, but they had an optimistic um, view on life. Um, and their cell was round with a healthy nucleus. So that to me was evidence that the mindset has a impact on physicality. So your physical being 
feels your thoughts. So thoughts and feelings are a buddy. They work together. Positive thinking, healthy body. So like, and it was evidence for me. And I was just like, yes. So, um, and I can, and I, you know, I don't know. Um, I won't go, oh, I can see my thoughts. You know, it is the feeling. So if I'm having a low day, I catch, when I catch myself in power of thought, and, and then I do find it funny. I think, well, no wonder you're not feeling very great. You haven't stopped focusing on something that doesn't work or, or you can't do anything about or something, you know, scenario. Um, so my experience is um, a lot of when I was really poorly, um, the reason I did get through it was I was so blessed to have a gift that was given to me in being, having the ability of always seeing the light and always seeing uh, what I could do, always seeing um, the best out of a bad situation, shall I say. So um, that really helped me recover quicker, I feel. Um, two weeks after a transplant, you know, when I had to go back into the hospital, um, I could see people in wheelchairs and all their heads hanging down and stuff. So what was the difference? I had my heeled boots on and my coat for you know and I'd and I wanted to walk in that hospital like I wasn't a patient and I did it I, I was seriously I slept in the car I, my mum I slept in the car all the way home but I just well, I just wanted I, I, I am strong I'm going to do this this isn't going to beat me and I totally was saying that to myself like an affirmation like a mantra all the time I'm going to be hel a healthy mum for my son I am going to do this. Nothing's going to stop me. And I recovered so much more quicker than, bless them, other patients mm. um, um, with um, no, no complications. So I didn't get into that, this is so bad, this is so terrible. Um, so that, to me, was very good evidence of the language versus physicality, that the loaded language we use... Um, it's okay to have a bad day. Do you know what I mean? It is okay to have a bad day. And um, there's things in life that are um, always going to happen. But if you stay in it, in that feeling, and you don't see that light, um, you know, that this is happening for something for us to learn, it does have a physical effect and impact on our body. You know when you're uh, depressed. Or, so when you're anxious, so your shoulders are up, you're like that, you shorten the breath and everything else, that like your body's feeling your, your anxiety, yeah? So it's the same when you're depressed or, you know, it's all, all a little bit low, isn't it? Like, yeah, well, you know, so you can tell, can't you? Um, so, yeah, so that's really my experience in seeing that um, the more awareness we have, the more understanding we have of how we work, um, and not saying start getting really... Um, What's the word? Uh, what's the word? Overanalyze. Yeah, overanalyzing. <laughs> you, over, over and analyzing everything, even to the, pa the fact where I'm sitting there and someone's talking to me and I'm going, oh, 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 they're telling themselves that. Um, it's just like, you know, I, I just would like to say, you know, you're like, if you say to yourself that things are really hard and you don't see a way out, your body is feeling that. Yes. We are so resilient as human beings. We really are. So, um, yeah. Yeah. So when you were saying about, the, you know, the, um, that study they did, mm. there's a couple of what, so one they did with water. Um, that with oh, water. yeah. Yes. Yeah, so they, um, they, uh, they did it with students and they, they spoke, um, and there's loads on YouTube about this. So they spoke, um, like negative words to the water and the water went really bad <laughs> you know it went yeah. really bad and then they did it with then they did it the opposite you know think, speaking loving positive words you know nurturing you name it and the water was like crystal clear <laughs> and you know I can't remember who did it some a doctor I can't remember his name um but then I've got Joe there's a man Joe Dispenser I love him he, they, they do um brain studies where yeah. um 
everything like the heart you know the, the way the heart career coherence um because your heart races obviously when you're thinking negative thoughts and it can slow down when you're thinking these um like really like low lethargic thoughts and after mm -hmm. they did this you know their students um they had heart coherence um the anxiety levels in their brain the certain i mean i don't know all about the science but everything um looked fresher and you know and they had this energy um because that's what it's about when our energy is taken by these faults that's why we're always like I, I, there's no way i can do it i don't even want to go out today because we're our energy is so low because the body hears it hears mm. centuries ago they used to separate the mind and the body mm. they'd say to the um, doctors right you have the mind i mean you have the body <laughs> and the Philosophers, psychologists, you have. Yeah, yeah. Them, but now they're connecting. Even doctors are now saying, this sounds like anxiety. No, 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 no. I'm not, this does sound like anxiety, you know, but because it's now seeing that they connect. Mm -hmm. when, you, when you're in fear based faults, um, it does affect the body. I've seen it, you know, I've felt it. Um, but when people start to see this, um, you know that you'll start to connect with the the way what you're doing to yourself mm -hmm. you know when i first started seeing this uh, or feeling it more i wouldn't say yeah feeling seeing some people see some people feel um i'm a feeler so when i started to feel it um it was a game changer so you really got to you know first of all i didn't know how i was going to get from that to that and i did start with gratitude you've talked about gratitude I thought mm -hmm. this needs to be a slow process. So I just started writing 10 things that I, I actually feel grateful for. Not what I should feel grateful for, because that never worked. I tried that first of all when it was becoming, you know, I read somewhere where you about 30 things you're grateful for, and I was exhausted. So I thought, no, that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's the opposite. Hang on, I need to get to work. I need to write 30 things first. <laughs> and then I changed it. I thought, I'm starting with three. And there I'm on. No, I just I just started with three. Um, yeah. And I did this for a few months, and then I actually do ten because I do. You know, three is not enough for me now. But then what you start to do is that slowly starts to change things up here. Your beliefs, because your beliefs are stuck. And then when we start to change that, it's all a natural process up here. You you do. Yep. You start to. Um, there's something happens. I'm not a scientist. I can't explain the words. What happens? But some neuro, neuro, whatever they call it. <laughs> so your beliefs neurological. Are stuck. That's it. <laughs> so your beliefs are stuck. What happens? The more you start to think differently, um, you've seen it. Something happens where it just that there's new connections that happen up here where it all becomes a natural thing. So when yeah. I I started with gratitude, that's what helped me massively. It was easy for me. It was like, yeah, no, I can see what I'm grateful for. Mm. It's also a thing that we take for granted, isn't it? I mean, open uh, opening up our eyes is a gift in the morning, you know. But the mind is so powerful. The mind is powerful. Um, but the science now is caught up with the, you know, I know spirituality is a loaded word. So let's say energy. Yeah. You know, so the science is now caught up with that. Yes. Um, now they can prove that is um, that is you know so when you are like if you um, or I say if you are around a group of people that are really like high really high vibrations and like really like you know all oh, chatty and lots of energy it's, it's the energy we feel energy from yes. other people if you spend a lot of time with people that are really low energy you know it's gonna have a little bit of an impact on you so um yeah no absolutely so it is energy you feel that energy from person to person so the one good thing i um have learned over the years is um remaining neutral so if you are around people that have say like a negative mindset a bit of low level thinking um staying neutral and not enrolling yourself in their story of what's going on for them and when you stay neutral, actually, that's more helpful for them because you're not trying to have a solution 
or you're not trying to because if you get in that story you're like down that rabbit hole yeah you, can't, you know and then you're actually leaving feeling um not too great yourself so to remain um operating at a higher vibration so it doesn't affect your physical being then you know it really um helps by not getting involved in the story that that person is completely stuck in or can't see a way out because we all have our own answers for ourselves no one needs fixing so when people really do start seeing that that they have everything they need to operate everything they want um that's another game changer you know but if someone just listens without getting into the story we all go around with stories in our head we all do it yeah of course do you know what i mean we, we all do it i mean crikey it's when you catch yourself and then you really have a good laugh at yourself though going oh that was that old story resurfacing i was talking to you about this before we started recording yeah. wasn't it um it's just sometimes the patterns need to the patterns will come back and then they just get less and less each time they that's come it. back. And that's when your awareness is becoming higher, like your consciousness level is rising. So, um, oh, I was sad to say something else to say, and it's completely gone. Yeah, back to you, Hayley. <laughs> it's gone, it'll come back. You were talking about um, when you were around people and their energy levels, and the more you... Um, when you start to become neutral, you see more, you become more aware. Yeah. Have you remembered it? No. Oh. That's maybe that was enough. That was enough to say, obviously. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, I'm not even panicking about it. I don't, I'm like, no, maybe that was enough. That was so enough. Just, just explain it again in a whole set of other languages, <laughs> which means exactly the same as what I said the first time. Yeah, we can do that. <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, so when you talk, when when um, you were talking about when you're around people, um, I remember when um, oh, I think it was my college tutor that first said this to me, like, or we were doing a lesson on it, and Ooh. I had the biggest anxiety. I thought, no, 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 I can't lose those people though. And that's what I started thinking. You know, I can't lose them. Um, it's not about even coming away from them because what I found is the more I started to become neutral and just. I started to really hear their words and remind myself, no, actually, this is their story. I'm here to support them. I'm, I'm here to support them because they're going through it. They're really going through mm -hmm. this. And if they're stuck here, they really believe they're going through it. Like, um, them they are. But what I found was the more neutral I did become and the more responsible, what we spoke about last week, for my own mm -hmm. feeling and energy, rather than coming away thinking, oh, I'm so drained. That was like the, mm -hmm. I didn't know about blaming that then, but I figured something out. Mm -hmm. I started to actually attract more people that were thinking like I was into my life. That's it. It was just, and it was, and I didn't realise this at the time until years later. I thought, oh, look <laughs> around me now. Yeah. And that's the science, that's the energy we attract. So when you do yeah. start to really, be, um, and becoming neutral is not, uh, you know, it, we make it more difficult um, than it is because of our old patterns. We get sucked in. And it's just, again, we have to repeat patterns. And every time we come wave drain, we go, I've done it again. You know, that's okay. And the next mm. time you go back, you just really, you find your neutral. My neutral might be hearing their words and reminding myself that this is their story. Your neutral might be something different. Have mm. you found it? Yeah. Because everyone's neutral. Yeah. You stay grounded is is yeah, an infinite way yeah. <laughs> to stay yeah, grounded. No, no, absolutely, no, there really is. Um, and you know, we're only human, so there might be clients. Um, you know, that you are hearing some, you know, pretty not very nice stuff. Um, but I know what's in them is in me. So if I can get through the life I have had, and I am a product, I am not a product of my past. So um i know that's in them so that really helps me so even though i might come away and have a little bit of thinking like hope they're going to be okay or la 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 i i do some my thing's music so i'll put you on I'll, and i'll busy i focus on something else or whatever um because i know they will whatever's going to happen is their 
is their um sounds a bit dramatic is their destiny for whatever is in their path you know yeah so um then i can as long as if if i can if I, if i've said one thing that they've found helpful if i can help um you know to change their minds and and to, to kind of teach them that they are more than their, their thinking because everyone is doing the very best with what they've got with their current state of thinking yeah and that um that was something that i learned with um kim because i was just like oh my god yes because you know somebody who is in a lot of like a thinking of the past um or like relationship breakdown um and things like that or whatever is going on for them um there'll be something they need to learn about themselves in that process so i know that um so it's, it really is teaching people that inside them is their own wisdom and their own guidance and their own uh, resilience we are look at what us humans have been through centuries and you know look what we've been through you know and here we are so yeah that's yeah and you, and you know what you said something um resonated when you spoke oh, i can't remember what you said but you said something um and it we so how do i explain it right so when we start to um naturally become more conscious and start to be aware of ourselves the body doesn't always catch up mm -hmm. the bodies are feelings and it doesn't always catch up so we all when we you know so i remember when i didn't weren't aware of this at the time this is later but i remember when i um separate from my from Megan's dad that was wow that was the most I felt it felt so mm. challenging like oh, no, I'm gonna die I can't do this you know but you know that feeling when you think there's mm. no way I can ever get through this I'll never be happy again but then when I was when I'd met and I finally you know when I met my my ex-partner when I wanted to go when I was ready to leave my body didn't catch up, so it was saying, "No, do you remember how you felt when you separated from that like, Megan's mm. dad? Do you remember how you felt?" So it was, and it was like, "Oh, that fear! No, I don't want to feel that again, so I'll stay." But actually, when I did it, it was, ne it was never as bad as I thought it was going to be. So what I'm, <laughs> I hope this makes sense, but the body doesn't always catch up, so we still live in that past. With a, you know, even though you've shifted and you've grown as a person those old patterns still creep back mm -hmm. and then when you start to see and it's always after i find with me i always find it after the events happened oh my god that was i get it i was mm. in that fear-based thinking that's why i didn't go quickly you know quicker. um mm. but we know we have to stay to learn but yeah so the body doesn't always even if you're becoming conscious sometimes just be aware you're thinking about something you've done in the past and it brought fear it doesn't mean it's mm -hmm. going to be the same because you've, no. shifted, you've grown yeah you'll be surprised yeah i know what i mean and i hope it comes across to one person <laughs> no i understand no i understand what you mean totally yeah. you like i'm going to be really authentic now so i have got oh, there's been a few things that i've been hanging on to um a few things have happened in my life in the last year <laughs> we have so one of those is, is a relationship breakup so um and since that, that i've had this recurring um pain um my rotator cuff in my shoulder um and um it's been really it's got to the point where i'm like there's there's, there's some connection so Oh, look at that struggle to be that authentic about it <laughs> yeah our physicality our physical body in, yeah. responds so that i'm now thinking about that and my body's gone <laughs> yeah so, so <laughs> perfect i forgot we were recording it on facebook <laughs> so so um so yeah so it's right in my shoulder and it, and it wakes me up sometimes and it was really painful this week today i've woken up so i've had a shift in my consciousness about certain situation um and i think i was holding on too hard there was something i wasn't letting go of there was something that i was not 
ready to say goodbye to. Um, and yeah, so I feel like now I know um, where my mind is, is where it is for this certain situation and this certain breakup. I've got a lot of a healthier mindset and I see uh, my part, his part, and I, I'm more consciously aware of what was going on, but my body's slightly delayed. So do you know what I mean? So my body is now in healing. So this pain in my shoulder, meta medicine, um, if you ever know anyone knows about meta medicine. So like when you're, when you're, um, you do something, the pain, when it starts hurting, that's the healing. So I feel like my, I am in healing of this. So I know now that my shoulder is going to recover. Oh, wow. um, and that's, that's how confident I am about the mind and the phys- physical be- body. Because we are, our body is the form energy. So this is what we see, but we're part formless. We're half, we're formless and form. So we're energy and like form human beings. We're this, this is what we're temporarily in, you know, in this, in this body. Um, but the energy is, is eternal. It'll forever evolve. So, um, yeah, so I know that this, my shoulder is now going to get better because I know I am, I've, I've, in my mind, I'm in a strong place and I know now what to do. Um, and so I just know that I'm in a little bit of healing from that, a little bit of healing. It's been quite a large bit of healing, actually. I'm not going to soften it. Um, but yeah, I feel, I feel, I woke up today and I think, actually, yeah, I feel better today. I feel better today and um, it's okay to have the odd day but I was just like my shoulder is going meh, meh. and I was just like because I was still holding on to something and I yeah. was I was but my I, but I wasn't aware of that so it's just really your how that works like with that language that story versus physicality it's always there it's like you know when you wake up and you, you know so my body is telling me what is going on and that's a feeling it's a sensation, it's an ache, it's, you know, so I'm not going to now focus on that. I'm going to, I'm going to just really be um, in the moment and stay present with my decision. And I feel so much better. And I know my shoulder doesn't, even talking about it, I can feel my shoulders getting looser. Wow. Uh, That's (laughs) powerful. And you know, my, um, my thyroid, this has been going on for years. So every time I go for a blood test, because I know I'm feeling, um, you know, you just know you've got like you either, you know, mine was um, overactive. So I was losing weight and I was really hungry. And my, I was like, what's going on? So we went, every time I go for my fire, it's always borderline. And it's like, oh, you're going to have to come back in six months because it's borderline. We don't want to give you medication. Mm. So that's on my mind, on my mind. And then I had the moment when, Hang on a minute. What's really going on? The thyroid, you, you know, your 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 throat, and it was all about um, communication and speaking my truth. And the more I started to speak my truth, and to myself more, it was. Um, mm. You know, I was doing things that I didn't really want to do, um, uh, you know, work wise. And I was thinking, what, what, you know, and the more I started to actually, I, I said to myself, no, this is not what I want to do forever. You know, and um, I want to do something else, and it's not just this. And I went back, and the fire was just fine. <laughs> oh, so I you, love that. Yeah, and my <laughs> legs as well. Remember that my legs were going. Oh God, I remember that. My legs wouldn't. I was walking down the road, and my legs just went stiff. And um, it got to a point where a couple of people I knew said, "Are you all right? Is your legs funny?" I was like, "Oh, people can see it now." Um, and it was all about not wanting to go to work. Yeah, you were stuck. So Every you time. Oh, yeah. Because I was rescuing and I was taking on, you know, everything. And, you know, my poor, <laughs> you know, I don't blame my poor clients. But, um, and then when I see this and I'm, my legs were fine. It was so strange. So strange. Mm. Mm. And when so I'm rushing. telling you. When I'm rushing, I'm rushing. Um, before my body would just I don't know I was asleep it would let me do whatever but now when I'm rushing I feel that leg go slightly a little bit and I'm like oh okay slow down slow down slow wow. down so it yeah. still happens but not as much not as bad as when it literally seized up mm. but now I just feel it going a bit weaker and I'm like that always that right leg 
well, I went to the doctors and they was like, I don't think you're having a stroke, but you're, you're, everything's fine. Because it was always this part of my body, the right <laughs> side. <laughs> Yeah, but there's the right and left. There's a physical yeah, the right. side, mental side. Yeah. Yeah. What's oh, the right no, side? Is it masculine oh, or feminine? No. Oh, I can't remember. There's a mental side. There's a mental, I know. Uh, like a mental and um. Oop, oop. Maybe I do know. Maybe I'm going to the mental yeah. side. It's cool side. You can look it know. up. But, yeah, yeah so it's always my problem. My arm went weak. Yeah, just look it up. We don't know. We're not scientists. We don't or doctors. But that's this. My um, my right side. I've got um, my knee. Um, uh, yeah, my knee. I've had problems with my knee. I've also had problems with my sciatic nerve on that side, and the shoulder problem is wow. on that side. Always on wow. this side. I'm gonna. I am gonna Google when we get off of this. I'm what side you. it is? Yeah. yeah. My arm started getting weak, and my right. It's always my right. Mm. and it's like it was just it was but we I knew deep down I wasn't having mm. a stroke I knew deep down it was mm. you know I had blood tests I you know I was trying to get the answers from outside of me give me a blood test tell me what's wrong give me some medicine mm. and um but then when I worked it out it just it's mind-blowing so powerful mm, it's amazing yeah sorry I spoke over you then no, um was, no it's yeah. powerful Hayley it is her, it was it is powerful, all of it is. But even, and that what's the other one I because I just keep saying lips and tea. It's Bruce Lipton, isn't it? Bruce Lipton. <laughs> Sorry. That's how I remember his name, Lipton and Tea. Bruce Lipton. Yeah, he's yeah, amazing. So he's amazing too, and he's got audio books and everything else that prove you know, it kind of gives a more of an understanding than we're able to. Yeah. <laughs> um of um of language versus physicality. Yes. Um, which today is what it's been all about, isn't it? So Yes, yeah, so Bruce Lipton and Joe Dispenser is another one. Um mm. them two. I love listening to because they explain it um in such an easy way mm. where you can understand it. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um Okay. Shall we um, finish up? Finish it there. Yeah. It's, <laughs> right. So I'm being really honest here. I've got somebody dropping off some shopping for me because uh, I'm not able to go to the shops and they're going to turn. I think they've just turned up. But I just wanted to thank everybody for subscribing, for liking, yes. and um, really being so supportive. And please comment if you've heard anything that really has helped you. Um, and who knows? Maybe one of you would like to come on and chat with us. Your experience is good. Love that. Yeah. Would love, yeah, that'd be cool, yeah. wouldn't it? Right, Leanne, you go and get your shopping. <laughs> oh, it's tough at the top. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Lots right. of love. Yes. And stay well. Yes, take care. <laughs> Bye, Bye. Bye.